All right, we're going to start off with Genesis chapter 1, please. I am going to divide this into separate clips for people online because there, it is consisting of different topics, but it is consisting of one topic. So we're, I'll probably title this as a long video as Intermediate Powers Between the Physical and Spiritual Worlds. So in my other video clips, you probably saw where I talked about the darkness, the frozen deeps, uh, that there's something to it, as well as concerning absolute zero. So we're going to cover more of that over here. Let's start off with Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It all begins, right? Everything begins somewhere. So in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So we see right here heaven and earth. Now the Bible also says, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, over here, you notice that it says, in the beginning, the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. So, in the beginning, He already completed it. He completed His creation of heaven and earth. So, it's already set, it's already done. But then in verse 2, all of a sudden, you see waters. Now, that's strange. Why is it that... At he created everything, and then all of a sudden, there's waters all over. But not only that, it says darkness was upon the face of the deep. So there's darkness as well. Now, why is that? The reason why is because of God's judgment concerning Lucifer and the sons of God. Now, I'm not going to go over there for time's sake, but... Uh, I would encourage people to watch my other video called The Gap Theory. Just watch that one. And I show you convincingly in every detail and step that there was something that happened before Adam's world. Before Adam's world, Lucifer and the sons of God used to live on the earth. And they ruled over creation. But what God did was, is that because Lucifer sinned against God in his pride, that's the reason why the Lord, he drowned them all out. And that's why he set forth darkness as well. Why would he set forth darkness? Because the Bible says at the book of 1 Peter, as well as the book of Jude, that he reserved the angels unto darkness forever with his chains of judgment. So that's where we can see where the darkness came from. So God judged everything with darkness and water. Now, how did we come into this picture today? How is it that mankind can have interaction with the spirit world and scientists are able to accomplish certain scientific experiments and make certain accomplishments where it enters almost to the borders of the spiritual realm? How did this all happen? Let's start off at the beginning. So this is why we're going to look at these intermediate powers. From these intermediate powers, we can see how we can enter the spiritual realm. The first thing God did, verse 3, and God said, let there be light, and there was light, and God saw the light that it was good, and God, now, there was light too, okay, but now there's light, that uh, God divided the light from the darkness, and God called the light day, and the darkness he called night, and the evening and the morning were the first day, okay, now, remember this, in this passage, he created light, so now we see another element here, remember, there's earth, there's heaven, there's waters, darkness, and light. Now, the verse specifically said he divided light from darkness. Now, as Bible-believing Christians, we believe every word in the Bible, and we read it exactly as it says. Amen. That's what we do. So he literally divided it. But now the question is, okay, how did he divide it? Where is the light? How did he divide light from darkness? Well, let's keep reading here. Then we're going to understand. Verse 6. And God said, let there be a firmament in the midst of the waters, and let it divide the waters from the waters. Okay, now God has to add a firmament here. Now remember, there's waters all over, correct? Now, uh, look, remember verse 2, darkness was upon the face of the what? Deep. Now there's a connection here with darkness and the deep here. Now just keep that in mind. Okay, we'll return to that later on. There's a connection right here. Mm. But uh, just keep that in mind. God made the firmament, verse 7, and divided the waters which were under the firmament from the waters 
which were above the firmament, and it was so. Okay, now the point is he divided these waters, one on top, one on the bottom. So what happened right here? Hmm. Well, what did he do? Let's erase a little bit right here of these waters, and then let's divide this thing now. So then, what he did with the waters now is that he had to put a firmament in between. And then this firmament divided the waters which were above from the waters which were below. So now we got waters over here. And then you got waters also underneath here. Now, I would encourage you to uh, watch my other video about deeps in outer space. If you watch that one, I explain much more in detail about how this works. This one, I'm just going to go through it very briefly and quickly so that I can jump to the more important areas, which is the intermediate powers. So waters, which are below. Now, how is this divided as? Well, if you keep reading at the book of Genesis chapter 1, the waters below are the waters in our earth today. And then the waters above is referring to the sea of glass that is the floor of heaven. You might say, how do you know that, Pastor? Because if you read the book of Revelation, Revelation chapter 4, as well as Revelation chapter 14, I'm doing this from memory, the verse says that God's throne was on a sea of glass. That's why it makes sense waters above, waters below. Why? Because there's a firmament in between and what is this firmament that's that universe that has all the stars and the sun and moon you might say okay you're jumping so much pastor one at a time let's do this so let's look at now at verse 9 and God said let the waters what under the heaven remember see waters above waters under so it's time about these waters. Let the waters under the heaven be gathered together unto one place, and let the dry land appear, and it was so. And God called the dry land earth, and the gathering together of the waters called he seas. See, I told you so. That's where the waters below is. So the waters below is here on our earth today. Whereas, how do we know this is referring to the universe where the sun, moon, and the stars are at? So let's, put, let's look at day number four. Let's jump ahead right here. We're going to look at verse 14. And God said, let there be lights in where? The firmament of the heaven to divide. Told you so. So now you got the sun over here. And then you also got the moon and the stars. So this is the firmament. There's no doubt. Now let's take things one at a time now. <laughs> this is interesting, isn't it? So if this is the firmament, this is the waters below, and the waters above, there's no doubt it had to be up to here because the firmament is in between waters. We already learned that. It has to be. So this seems right. Why is this right? Because the Bible mentioned that the floor of heaven is a sea of glass. I already mentioned that to you. So we already see that. Now, as we add this together, remember God divided the light from the darkness. Ah, now we know where that darkness is. It's what? Here. That's why in the universe it's dark. You might say, why is that? How do you know that? Because why did, why did he say at verse 14 he has to put lights in there? That's where the darkness is. Oh, but what about the light? He said he divided the light from the darkness. John chapter 1. John chapter 1. When God created the world and God created the whole universe, what did the Bible say? God is light, and in him is no darkness. And he created the universe too. Notice the context of the light is in the context of him creating the universe. Look at John chapter 1 and verse 2. The same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him. And without him was not anything made that was made, right? So this is the context of the beginning of creation. He created everything. But look at this. Why is it all of a sudden it says, In him was life, and the life was the light of men, and the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehended it not. Verse 7, 
The same came for a witness to bear witness of the light. Uh, verse 9, that was the true light, which lighteth every man that cometh into the world. Wow. See, Scripture with Scripture shows you everything. That's who the light is. The light is God. Now, if you don't think so, then why did God have to put lights here? Where do we get our lights from in our earth today? How do we get the lights? Unless, that's why God had to create the sun and the stars and all that. Now, this is very interesting. Now that we got all this here, go jump to Revelation again. So let's talk about that sea of glass, shall we? Now let's talk about how this intermediates between the physical and spiritual world. And then keep your hand at Genesis chapter 1 as well. Genesis chapter 1. Because we're going to be going through scripture with scripture. And it's going to be very interesting what the Lord shows. Okay, so we're going to look at Revelation chapter 15. It'll be chapter 15, and then we'll look at verse 2. Chapter 15, verse 2. Okay, so like I told you folks, I'm doing this all, all of this purely from memory. So just uh, kind of put up with me if I jump around places, okay? Revelation 15, verse 2. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with what? Fire. And then that had gotten the victory over the beast and over his image. So notice right here that there's a sea of glass mingled with fire at the floor of heaven. Ah, then we've got fire here as well. So there's fire over here as well. Now think about this. Genesis chapter 1. What did God say about his creation right here? He mentioned right here that in verse 14 of Genesis chapter 1, God said, let there be lights in the firmament of the heaven to divide the day from the night and let them be for what? Signs and for seasons and for days and years. So there's something to it here. This is supposed to be a sign of something. These are supposed to be a sign of something. Look at, jump to Colossians. Colossians chapter 1. Colossians 1. This is going to be a fun night. We're going to look at all the scriptures right here and then we'll see what the Bible says. Look at the book of Colossians chapter 1 and then we'll look at verse 16. Verse 16. You got to understand this. Creation is supposed to represent God. Creation is supposed to represent God's work. These are for signs, remember? Colossians chapter 1 and verse 16. For by him were all things created that are in heaven and that are in earth. Visible and what? Invisible. See, everything of the physical realm, all of the physical universe. So here's the physical realm. As well as the spiritual realm, all of it was created by him and for him. This is supposed to represent something here. Uh, let's see right here. Whether they be thrones or dominions or principality or powers, all things were created by him and for him, and he is before all things, and by him all things uh, consist. And then what you're going to find out is that if you jump to, we're not going to go over there, but do you ever remember reading Romans 1? If you want to jump ahead, you can go over there, but I'm not going to turn there. If you jump ahead at Romans 1, what did the Bible say? His creation is supposed to be evidence of them so that they are without excuse. They are without excuse at Romans chapter 1. So we see in Colossians chapter 1, as well as Romans chapter 1, that creation is supposed to represent God. Okay. So you got to understand this. When God creates all these things, he's not just doing it randomly like this. I'm just going to create a son. Why, God? Oh, I'm just going to do it. No. He has a reason for everything. Yeah. Now, if you've been saved for a while and you've seen God work in your life, you know God does things for a reason. He just doesn't just put things out randomly. Oh, it's just because I want to. 
That would be so lame that if sin entered into our world, we go through pain and suffering. Why are we going through this, God? Oh, just because I want to? <laughs> no, that'd be horrible. He has a plan and purpose for it. So he did all this for a reason. It's supposed to be a sign of something. It's supposed to picture, represent what God's doing, his movement. Okay, so think about this. Then this physical realm is supposed to picture what? Now, let's enter a little bit more right here, shall we? So, God is light. In him is no darkness, yes? Here, here he is, the light. That's why when you go to heaven, it's all what? Light. There is no night there, as the Bible said. It's all light. Okay, let's go through this one by one then, about the intermediate powers. You know what the intermediate powers are? Earth, waters, darkness, and fire. So let's go through all of this one at a time here. So, in darkness, and then also fire and waters. Why is it that there are shamans? And why is it that there are certain uh, witch doctors? and tribal doctors, etc. why is it that in order to enter the spiritual realm, you have to look at the fire? Take a closer look yeah. through the fire. Why is that? Because supposedly when you go through the fire, who are you supposed to contact? You're supposed to contact the spiritual realm. Why is it that they emphasize a lot about darkness too? Shut your eyes and let's meditate and do yoga. Uh, close your eyes when you pray, Christians. We close our eyes. Why, why is it all darkness? Because we, you make it dark to enter some sort of spiritual realm. That's why Christians pray. We close our eyes and pray. We enter a spiritual realm there. That's the reason why uh, occultists, and that's the reason why New Agers and witches, they would make the room dark. They would emphasize darkness sometimes. So that you can, what, enter the spiritual realm after that. So that you can hit a light somewhere, right? You first go through darkness, empty the mind, you go through something there, and then finally you just find some sort of light within that journey. As you close your eyes, as you make everything empty, empty your mind. Make it dark. That's how you contact the spiritual realm. Is through, you have to have darkness to reach the light. That's why they have fire so that you can contact with the light. But here's another thing, what's very interesting, I, get, I gave this in my other video concerning about waters, right? The title of the video is Enter the Deeps and you'll see heaven or hell. How do you go to heaven? You have to go through the waters, right? How do you go to, to hell? Through the waters, right? Where's hell? Hell, that, this is fire. Where's another place of fire? Right below the earth. Right below the earth. That's hell. Is this a spiritual realm? Yes. But it's very close to the physical realm as well. In the core of the earth is what? Lava, magma, etc. The core of the earth is all fire. Think about that. The, you gotta understand this, the spiritual realm and the physical universe, this will make a lot of sense. You divide the two. The spiritual is not the same as the physical, but this does not mean that there is, not, there is no intermediate plane. That's gonna be very eye-opening. You gotta understand this. With the physical and spiritual world, you just don't jump like that. You don't jump from physical to spiritual or spiritual to physical. You just don't jump like that. There's something intermediate in between so that, why? Because the intermediate mediates between the two because these two are contradictory things. Galatians chapter five, what did it say? The flesh contradicts the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. These are contrary one to the other so that he cannot do the things that he would. Flesh, the flesh, physical realm, and spirit, spiritual realm, they're contradictory. But here's the thing, why is it that a Christian, 
A saved Christian can do things spiritually and can do things physically. Is there an intermediate factor that a saved Christian has where he can do fleshy physical things as well as spiritual things? Can some of you guess what it is? That's why it exists the soul. Oh, now things are making sense why the soul, if you're not saved in Jesus Christ, where you don't have the Holy Spirit, because your spirit is dead, your soul, all it contacts is the physical thing of the flesh, and this flesh sins every day. No wonder your soul is contaminated, and God has to judge it with hell fire. Because to get God is holy, he is light, amen? So this light is holy, it consists of no darkness, right? But to enter through the holiness and that light, you have to go through the fire. These people are lost without hope, without God. They cannot be holy, which is why they are cast into the what? Fire. Right there. The fire is one of the most powerful, uh, one of the most intermediate powers. Fire. Because why? A lost, God cannot have sin at all. He cannot have sin at all within his creation. So how is he going to contain a sin? Fire. Fire is a cleansing factor, see? Fire is a cleansing factor. That's why there are false religions that come up with the teachings such as Catholicism about purgatory where it burns off, cleanses off the sins. That's why God has you burn forever in hell. Why? Because your soul is eternal with sin. And unless you have an eternal payment, unless you have an eternal payment, which is the blood of Jesus Christ, and if you don't have the eternal blood, then you're going through eternal fire. Isn't that what the Bible says at Matthew chapter 3? John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but he will baptize you two things, Holy Ghost and fire. Why did he say that? Because the Holy Spirit cleanses you, whereas the fire, it is a cleansing factor as well. And that fire is hell. If you continue reading Matthew 3, John the Baptist said, whose fan is in his hand and he will thoroughly purge, see clean, purge his floor with unquenchable fire. How about that, folks? See, this, these are powerful factors right here. Does it make sense now why when you think about certain religions, oh, these guys are pagans. They don't know what they're talking about, these uh, witch doctors, these shamans and stuff like that. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Even secular scholars who study physical anthropology as well as cultural anthropology, when they go through some of these things that these shamans and witch doctors do, they can't figure out how they did it, despite of all their scientific experiments. They can't understand that. Uh, here's something uh, recent that I just learned concerning psychology. Psychology, I'm going to do a video on that one day, but I'll just say this real briefly, okay? Psychology is the study of the soul. Yeah. That's what it means. Psych came from Greek, which is meaning soul, study of the soul. Psychology is the study of the soul, which is the mind. That's why psychologists... You know, to them, soul is just a term. But more accurately, what they're studying is mind. That's what they're saying. Mind is a real you. Soul is a real you. That's why we believe mind is the soul. That's what we Christian Bible believers believe in. Now, anyway, this is the study of the mind, uh, study of the soul. That's what psychology teaches concerning here. Now, concerning uh, the soul issue, when it is contaminated by sin, then obviously you burn in hell fire forever. But there's a thing within psychology, because remember, the soul is an intermediate force with the physical realm, with your body, right? There's a thing that they could not understand, psychologists cannot understand, and it's called the placebo effect. What is this? What this means is that people are healed when you just, uh, when they believe it. When you tell them that, uh, let's say you give them a drug and you trick them, this drug is the most powerful drug. It should cure you, uh, the, your sickness, the pain that you're feeling right now. And they took it and they are actually, I'm not kidding. This is secular scholars here, okay? Secular grad level scholars. They say that there are actual cases where people got healed. They got better. 
until somebody mentioned later on that it was fake, then they got sick again. But that's the reason why Scientology, Scientology right here, what, do, what does Scientology teach? Scientology, they teach that to be well, you, it's all about the mind. Did you ever notice Tom Cruise, the famous actor? He's uh, part of that group, the Scientology group. You ever wonder why he's able to do these crazy stunts, crazy actions? Normally, people would be fearful of those kind of stunts and actions. Why can he do it? Because Scientology, they're all about the mind here. You get well. That only happens when you think it happens. Anyways, as we continue on right here, so that's the strange thing that psychologists can't understand right here. It's the power of the soul right here, the power of the soul. Because we believe there's a difference with body, soul, and spirit, that's why these guys don't understand. You know why? Because they're all bound to the physical universe. They don't recognize there can be an intermediate force with the spiritual realm. We believe in it. We believe not only the physical universe, but there's an intermediate state as well as the spiritual realm. Okay, so you see right here, that's how you enter the spiritual realm is through these elements, through these elements. These are the intermediate powers where you can enter the spiritual realm.